One of the biggest things in the NBA is the players' numbers that they wear on their backs during each game. This doesn't change usually, except in certain situations where their number needs to be swapped out for some reason. Many people ask where they actually get these numbers in the first place, so stay tuned to today's video as we're going to discuss how NBA players got their jersey numbers and other NBA news. But first, a reminder about our brand new giveaway. We're giving away a PS5 with a copy of NBA 2K22 and Madden 22. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. First up, we have Anthony Davis, number 23. The first player on this list is Anthony Davis, and he's a clear fan favorite and has been ever since he joined the league as the first overall pick from Kentucky. Davis has the number 23 on his back, and there are many reasons why he would wear that specific number. Many believe that it was because he was paying respect to Michael Jordan, as he is from Chicago. But in fact, he's paying respect to another player. The number 23 is actually in honor of LeBron James, who is actually now his colleague. Did you know about this one? Let us know down in the comments section below. Next up, we have Paul George, number 13. Changing numbers in the NBA isn't something that happens all the time, but when it does, it usually means a large change for the player himself and the team he is going under. Early on in his career, Paul George actually wore the number 24 with respect to Kobe Bryant. In fact, he's actually on the path to taking the place of Kobe Bryant and passing on his torch after his tragic death last year. However, if you pay attention to the NBA, you'll know that Paul George doesn't go by the number 24 anymore and instead changed to 13. He didn't really do this for any sentimental reason. He just thought that PG-13 would be a very catchy nickname for a player. He decided to swap it for a fresh start and to begin even stronger than ever before. And now is Kevin Durant, number 35. Kevin Durant is someone to expect on a list like this as he is easily one of the most iconic players in the NBA right now now and has been for many years. He isn't a player to hide away from his feelings, especially when it comes to showing them to the media and the public. He has even been titled Cupcake by many because of his softness. However, he wasn't called soft at all when he decided to change his jersey number to honor his AAU coach. Charles Craig was his mentor, his father figure, and one of the biggest figures in his life. Sadly, he was murdered at the age of 35, and that's why he changed his number to pay respects. Did you know about this one? Let us know down below. Next is Chris Paul, number three. Chris Paul is a legend in the game and is easily one of the best point guards in the NBA's long history. He constantly made the right play, is smart and cautious about everything, and always knew exactly what to do and in what order. He got his number because of many previous players in his career, and it only made sense in the end. The main reason he got his number was to honor his father and brother. He combined his previous jersey numbers, 1 and 2, to make 3. Now he's called CP3. What a cool story and what a cool player. What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments section down below. Now we have Dennis Rodman, number 70. Our penalty ultimate player on this list is none other than Dennis Rodman. He has always been a different person than many in the sport. He has a very different and somewhat twisted sense of humor, and that's something that he'll be remembered by forever. Other than being one of the best defenders on the planet, that is. He joined the Dallas Mavericks and demanded to have the number 69 as a joke, but it was rejected and was given the number 70. What a weird story, but when you understand the player himself, it kind of makes a whole lot of sense. And our final player is Michael Jordan, number 23. Michael Jordan is a legendary player and is recognized as the main man of the NBA. He actually changed the meaning of the number 23 when he wore it on the court. His story is actually one of the most heartfelt and is in honor of his brother Larry. His brother would beat him at the sport as they were growing up and wore the number 23. He believed he could be half as good as his brother was, so he wore the same number. Now the number is recognized as Jordan's number and is plastered in the history books of the sport and many others. What did you think of these jersey numbers? Let us know down in the comments section below. And now, we have some more NBA news. Now, Kyrie Irving calls booing Boston crowd like the scorned girlfriend. In his most recent game, literally every move that Kyrie Irving made was met with the entire crowd booing his existence. They were really loud and obnoxious for everyone else in the stadium that night. Sadly, the Brooklyn Nets point guard doesn't even expect it to change over the next few games. I know it's going to be like that for the rest of my career coming in here, Irving told reporters after the 126-120 loss to the Boston Celtics. It's like the scorned girlfriend who wants an explanation on why I left, but still hoping for a text back. I'm just like, it's fun while it lasted. I think that's the relationship that makes it fun. The entire crowd managed to boo Irving during the player introductions and every time he even touched the ball. While the game had about 30 seconds remaining in the fourth, the crowd began yelling Kyrie sucks during Celtics free throws. Jason Tatum attempted to quiet them all down, and even the television cameras caught a sneaky shot of Irving shaking his head and smiling at them. Clearly he hates what's going on, but knows that it can't be stopped easily. He just needs to play on and ignore what they're saying to him. This also happened to be Kyrie Irving's first game back since about mid-January, and his first Boston game since last year's playoffs. This was also where he was hit by a rogue water bottle after the Nets won in Game 4. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section down below. 
up. Next up, we have Harden's dig at a teammate as 76ers star calls out trash-talking ex-boss. Recently, we saw James Harden score just enough to put away the upset and pesky Knicks at the Wells Fargo Center. The Knicks led by around 16 points in the first half of the game, and were looking to stop the Sixers party that had welcomed Harden to Philly for his first home game. The atmosphere was amazing, as Harden went in for 26 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. You really had to be there to understand the emotions the crowd was emitting. Harden then made a huge impact in the locker room as well, when he spoke some words of wisdom that sparked the 21-point second half of the match. James Harden asked me at halftime if I was going to play tonight, Maxi said. Brutal, but effective. As for the Knicks side of things, it once again led them to a defeat even though Julius Randle and RJ Barrett gained the team a total of 52 points altogether. In the final minutes of the game, the crowd began to cheer even more as one of the players waved to them. This was as they upped their lead to around 16 points, and even the loudspeaker let out a big bing-bong to taunt the Knicks in their failing mantra of hook. Speaking of Embiid, he took a shot at former Sixers GM Brian Colangelo, referencing a series of burner accounts on Twitter that criticized him and former teammate Markel Fultz. I've been through a lot, whether you're talking about GMs using burner accounts, talking trash on their players, he said, talking about keeping the culture strong in the group. And that's the end of today's video. The NBA always has some interesting stories going on, but only at certain parts of the week. Because of how the games correlate to the days of the week, news only seems to be released on a weekend or at the beginning of the week. Therefore, there aren't that many relevant stories at one time. However, the stories that do shine through are incredible and really show the dedication these players have for the sport. From putting up with booing crowds to constant teammate changes which can make the game awkward, these players have a lot to put up with, especially with the ongoing changes to the sport. Hopefully you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, please let us know down below in the comment section. It would be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye!